do you have any advice in terms of anyone who might want to visit family in another city in Ontario? Yeah, so I would say you really have to be careful if you're traveling from one city to the next. Um, I would say in certain situations, if you're in a red zone or if you're traveling to a red zone, I would probably avoid travel or avoid having people come in at that time. So in other words, if you're in a red zone, if you're going to a red zone, you should be very, very mindful of some of those restrictions that are in your zone or that are in the zone that you're actually going to. I've heard these conversations happening between people saying, you know, I'm staying home for two months so that I can take this risk to get on a plane or get on a train and go visit family and I'm just going to stay home. I'm not going to go anywhere. What do you say to those people who, who kind of say they're going to mitigate the risks that way? Yeah, so we have to be careful by just simply setting aside two weeks of our time to isolate and then thinking that we can get rid of COVID that way. If that was the case, we could simply have a full lockdown here in Ontario and we get rid of all cases of COVID-19, but that's simply not something which is actually possible. Even in some areas where they've had a full lockdown, they have been able to half the number of like, cases in a week or two, but they have never been able to eliminate the actual cases. So even though that seems like a common sense approach, um, you know, simply setting aside two weeks and not seeing anyone at that time, you've got to be careful because you are still going out places. You are still going out uh, the grocery shop and you're still doing other things like that um, where, you know, you may actually see some of those cases actually rise from there. Communication has been clear, I mean, uh, on whether or not people should be traveling during the holidays. The common thing that we've seen with this government is that the clarity has been lacking in a lot of recommendations which they made. Even thinking back to Halloween, um, you know, we had, you know, some restrictions saying it was okay, then no, it wasn't, then it's up to the medical officers. Um, it was very, very like unclear, even with a gathering like that. Um, and even as it stands right now, um, you know, with that like talk about, you know, we can like, get to the green by Christmas, we're giving people hope and we're, you know, we're basically now telling people that, you know what, it's probably safe to travel. It is probably safe to go from one region to the next. And as I said, that's absolutely not the case. Um, so not as it just, you know, the information is not just unclear, but in that case, it's actually wrong. We're getting a lot of like, incorrect information um, that is based off of not even optimism. It's just based off of really not a clear understanding of what the actual numbers are like here in Ontario. I know we're talking a lot about domestic and, and traveling within Canada and within Ontario. What about international travel? For international travel, um, it's quite safe to actually travel on an airplane. But just because it's quite safe to travel on an airplane does not mean that we should be traveling from one country to the next. One thing that we really have to keep in mind is that if you travel somewhere else, they may have a 14-day quarantine period. Then when you come back here, you have a 14-day self-isolation there. So really, you've lost 28 days sitting inside, waiting, not being able to do anything. Um, even though some of these areas may have uh, restrictions in place for antigen tests and other things like that, where you may think that you may get out of self-isolation faster, that may work for when you're going there, but it may not necessarily work for when you're coming back here to Ontario. Um, if you went to, let's say, Europe, and even if you're traveling from one country to the next, there's even certain countries which won't allow you in if you're traveling from one place to the other. So even like connecting flights, you've got to be careful of things like that. You mentioned airplanes, so I have to ask, when we're looking at safety of travel, trains, planes, or automobiles? 100%, where you're able to be masked up um, and with like, people in your own immediate family, that's the safest way to travel from one location to the next, but I'd be very, very cautious about like, going across borders. Gotcha. And which mode of transportation would you choose between, like which is best? So I would say if you had your own car, if you had your own rental vehicle and you were only traveling with your own family, um, that is for sure the safest way to actually travel. We have actually seen a lot of transmission in uh, the trains and also buses. Um, you know, there's been a lot of studies out um, that show that we see things like that. But as I was saying, it's you know, remarkable how small the transmission is in airplanes. Um, you'd expect it to be much, much higher. We're still seeing transmission but it's more from one seat to the next. We're not seeing it throughout the whole entire airplane. Um, there's some studies um, that were done out of like Asia where there's been one person on an actual bus and they have um, infected up to 20 other people. Um, I think one of the issues with some of these like, buses is that if you have a few windows open or if you have a like, closed air circulation system, 
one individual getting sick is able to infect many, many other people. If you do choose to take one of these travel methods, one thing that you can definitely do is to make sure that you sit by an open window. Um, one thing that it has shown at least on like, bus travel is that the closer you are to an open window, it's the best thing possible because you're by air that is actually being replaced. You're not by air that is being recirculated. I think you tweeted something about they should self-isolate coming back. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. So I think with schools, I think schools would be safest if they shut down for the two weeks and move to an online environment for the two weeks following Christmas break. Um, I've heard a lot of people talk about the two weeks before the break, but then we kind of run into that like miscommunication problem. Then we're almost saying to people, well, you know what? If you isolate for two weeks, you're able to travel from one region to the next. But it's that traveling from one region to the next, whether we advise for it or it, against it, that's the real issue. And if we have people traveling from one region to the next, even, the, even when they're not supposed to, um, we may see cases start to uptick. And the worst thing that we can do at that point is to then send kids back to school. So I do think we need that like two week move to an online learning environment, but I do think it needs to be the two weeks following Christmas break, not the two weeks before. We shouldn't set people up for failure but we should have an environment where if we had people that went against the restrictions, we make sure that we keep COVID-19 out of our schools.